Hello, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro, a professor in the Department of Family and Community Medicine at the University of Toronto, and I sit on the Board of Trustees of the North American Menopause Society. We're joined by a past president of the North American Menopause Society, Steve Goldstein, who is professor of obstetrics and gynecology at NYU and director of gynecological ultrasound and co-director of bone densitometry and bone body composition at NYU. There's lots of things we could talk about with you, but we're going to focus on ultrasound and postmenopausal bleeding, and then we'll look at perimenopausal bleeding. So for a woman who's not had a period for a year, comes in having intermittent bleeding or some spotting, how concerned should we be and what do we do? Well, we've got to be very concerned. We teach third-year medical students that postmenopausal bleeding is cancer until proven otherwise, although only three to seven percent of those women actually have endometrial cancer. They've got to be evaluated to rule out cancer or even precancer changes that the uterus might have. And what's the best way to do that? Well, that's evolved over time. Uh, blind biopsy used to be the standard of care, but clearly now it's been shown that when the pathologic process is not global, a blind biopsy can be fraught with error. So we're moving increasingly towards what we call an ultrasound-based approach for the triage of patients with abnormal bleeding. If you can see the endometrial echo clearly and distinctly on ultrasound, and it's thin, and we, the American College of OBGYN has uh, settled on four millimeters as the magic number. If you have a thin white line less than four millimeters, large prospective studies have shown that the risk of cancer is one in 917, and a biopsy is not only not indicated, but will be uh, worthless additionally. Mm -hmm. Um, if, however, the endometrial echo on ultrasound is greater than four millimeters, or you can't adequately see it, the uterus is axial, she's had previous surgery, she's got coexisting fibroids, she's got adenomyosis, then you've got to resort to better visualization. And in that case, we either put some fluid into the uterus called saline infusion sonohysterography, or office hysteroscopy. Mm -hmm. uh, would be appropriate ways of evaluating the endometrium to get a better view of it. Now let's go to something that's even harder. It's the perimenopausal woman, and we all see these women who come in with, you know, cycles all over the place. And the question is, is how much do we chalk this up to perimenopausal and hormonal imbalance that's going to straighten itself out, or should we be more aggressive in our investigations? Well, basically, the American College of OBGYN guidelines uh, from July of 2012 are pretty specific. In women over 40 that have irregular bleeding cycles, you need to do the same kind of endometrial evaluation, although good prospective studies have shown that virtually 80% of the time, that's going to represent a diminution in ovulation, mm -hmm. uh, irregularness to the cycle, which we call, tell patients is hormone imbalance, but 20% of the time there will be organic pathology. There will be things like polyps, submucous myomas, uh, frank hyperplasias, and even the occasional carcinoma. So the problem is the definition of menopause often is no bleed for at least 12 months. Well, the bleed a woman got, you never know that that's the last one she's ever going to get. So if you take care of menopausal women, almost by definition you're taking care of perimenopausal women. So really any woman over 40 and I would add here that if she's at high risk, polycystic ovarian syndrome, markedly obese, you should even think about that before age 40. Mm -hmm. But the guidelines are over age 40 with irregular bleeding. That's not the same as regular but heavy menstrual bleeding. And is for a different the entity. primary care physician who's referring for ultrasound, is it you know, buyer beware in terms of where we refer and the strength of what we're seeing. When is it appropriate for primary care to make the decision I best refer on? Well, I think that it, that's going to depend on person's own comfort and the quality of the people that you refer to, but it is essential, certainly in a large prospective study that we published on the perimenopausal patients, approximately 10% of the time in our hands, and we're supposed to be the experts, we could not visualize an endometrial mm -hmm. echo. So in postmenopausal women, I'm working on it now, but I would say that number approaches 30%. So you can only use this ultrasound-based approach if you see the entire endometrial echo, not if you angle the transducer long enough to produce something linear white, freeze the frame, put on the calipers, and say that's the endometrial mm -hmm. echo. So 
if you're not sure that you visualize the entire endometrial cavity, then you've got to resort to either putting in saline or hysteroscopy, preferably in the office. And that would be a referral for primary oh, care. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much. You're very welcome.